Hey guys, how's it going? It's Rogaway here and it's time for another tutorial. And today we are looking at chronograph photography. And what is chronograph photography? Um, well, let's just take a quick little Google search for that. Um, I'm going to show you what it looks like. Chronograph, oh geez. Photography. All right, chrono photography as it's known. This is what we're uh, what we're going for. We're looking at a sequence of actions. All right, there's a good example, and uh, we're trying to build motion into our photos um, by showing a frame by frame uh, composition. All right, so that's what we're going to look at. We're going to look at how to create this and how to edit it in Photoshop. So let's get started. In your uh, folder here, I got a file called Setup. I'm going to open that with Photoshop. And so let's let Photoshop run here. And it's very important that you do a setup photo. All right, it's going to set the tone for the rest of your photos that you take in the sequence. So there's uh, my funny looking son here who uh, is making um, a very funny face and what we're going to do is we're going to go here and adjust for the color in the scene here going to just tweak it I might go and set the white balance off of this brick back here because it's kind of a neutral gray and we're just going to tweak it a bit all right, we're going to get it to a point where we're happy with how it looks. And I'll tell you why this is very important in a sec. Okay, so that's not bad. Now, the important thing is when you're doing chronograph photos that you have a sequence of shots um, that are taken from the exact same viewpoint my camera had to be in the exact same spot it's on a tripod and it had to be set to burst mode so that I was able to capture each frame of his movement this uh, photo that I'm working on is strictly for setup only I've just adjusted my colors I'm gonna to go to presets which is up in the top right here is second tab from the right and I'm gonna make a new preset by clicking this new button down here and I'm gonna call it chrono I'm going to hit OK. I close that window very quickly, but um, what this does in a preset is it saves all of your settings. All our color settings, all of our lens settings, all of our advanced settings, everything. So I'm not actually going to open this image. I'm going to hit Cancel. All I wanted to do was create the preset for the color. So I'm going to hit Cancel. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the first shot of the sequence. I'm going to show you what the sequence looks like first. So we got him coming into the frame. We got him kind of jumping and doing a roll. Chinese get up, I believe it's called. And then he kind of does a spin. And he's laughing as he goes out of the frame. And, and there's the total movement through the scene. And there's the setup, obviously. Now you can see a little bit of camera shake um, as I was doing the shots. It could have been the wind or it could have been um, just me shaking the camera as it's uh, going off. But let's go to this first one and let's get it open. Okay, so the real um, excellent thing about the preset is now we just click the preset tab and we click chrono and that color is all set up to exactly how we just set that uh, setup file. So I'm going to hit open image. And his file or the image is going to load. And there it is. And so we've got one frame of his actions on a background layer. And we're just going to move that over. Now we're going to open up the next one. Same deal. We're going to hit chrono. Everything's set up, and it's very important that the color is exactly the same. I'm going to hit open, and it's going to load. And now we can at least get started. This is very repetitive. Um, 
And once you learn how to do it, you can do them very quickly. So we got the first frame of his movement and we got the second one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Command A to select the entire canvas. I'm going to go to Edit Copy. Whoops, just one sec. Go to Edit Copy or Command C. And I'm just going to jump back to this one. I'm going to press Command V or Edit Paste to put that directly over top of the other image. Now you can see there's a little bit of camera shake. That shouldn't matter very much for the sake of the tutorial. Let's close this image now. We're not going to need it. We're going to only be working on this one file. So now we have a layer with his second frame and his first frame both in the same one. And what we're going to do here is we're going to add a layer mask. So we're going to go down here, layer, add a layer mask. We get our layer split and we're on the layer mask. We're going to go to our paintbrush and we're going to make sure it's set to black. That's really important because it's going to hide the parts that we don't want to see. And I'm just going to set a brush of about, let's start at about 50% and let's see how that looks and adjust from there. Now one important thing to note if uh, you'll notice my cursor is the shape of the brush. If you ever see it like this, where it's a crosshairs, uh, it used to drive me crazy because I would be helping a student I didn't know how to switch it back. Um, you just go to the cap locks key and it switches back and forth between a crosshair and a, uh, a brush, the brush size. So now all I have to do is paint over the area where his first action happened. All right like that. Now why does this work? A couple students or you know people are confused as to why this works. Well all we did put the second frame over top of the first one if I hide that lower background layer all I've done is basically made a clear part. I could have done it with an eraser although I prefer to work with uh, layer masks. I made a clear part here so that his first frame is showing through. All right, pretty brainless. And um, again, now we've got two steps in place here. Now let's go to the next one. Well, that's okay. Let's go to the next one. Same exact steps. Preset, chrono, open image. That's gonna load up, there it is. We're gonna press Command A, press Command C. Go back to this one, press Command V. Third frame is in there. Now we have the first three frames of his movement. Same deal, add a layer mask. And now we're going to paint two of them back into the photo. It's important that you get the shadows and stuff too because if you miss that, it takes away some of the realism of what we're doing. All right, so we're going to paint back both of these guys. All right, now we're talking. And there's three. Even though it's repetitive, I am going to show, whoops, you don't want to paint over them because then, sorry, you don't want to paint over him because then it'll hide him. Um, you don't want to ever paint over him on the, the layer that he's supposed to be showing up on. Okay, going on to the fourth step here, we're going to do the same thing. Open with Photoshop, select our preset once again, hit open. Exact same steps, uh, like I said, so if you're doing a huge one of these, it does take a while. Command A, Command C, Command V. Okay, now layer mask again, and paint back the last three steps. All right. Almost, okay, good. What I find is it gets very confusing if you make a mistake because then you have to try to figure out what layer the mistake is on. All right, especially if you notice it later on while you're, you know, working through it. All right, so there we go. Now we got four. Excellent. We're going to go to uh, the fifth step. 
Same deal, fifth step, let's open it up. Now we're gonna run into an issue. I'm gonna show you what it is and how to fix it. We're gonna to go to Chrono, same deal, open up. I'm gonna close my other tabs because they're just taking up memory. Command A, Command C, go to the first one, Command V, and let's just close those tabs like I said. I don't wanna save. Don't want to save. Okay, here's the problem with this one. As you can tell, his hand and his foot are overlapping in this particular sequence. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add a layer mask. We're going to paint back the other guys. Except we're going to be very careful where the overlap is taking place. Alright, so we're going to paint them back. <clears throat> Okay, good. All right, and there we go. So they're back. Okay, so let's just zoom in on that spot. Like I said, where the overlap is taking place. Whoops, a little too close. Same deal. Brush. But this time what we're going to do is we're going to increase the hardness of our brush to about 80%. I might have to go harder than that. And we're going to very carefully here, probably I should have brought my brush size down too. We're going to very carefully paint over that area without ruining any of the uh, existing image that's there. Ooh, I missed some of him there. Okay, and now we got to kind of see where his arm would come down too. And it's got to be here somewhere. There it is. It's in kind of a bad spot because there's a lot of little detail there. Okay. And make sure we get all of it. I missed a little piece up in here. I'm going to get that too. Okay, command zero to take a look. And now you can see he's overlapping himself pretty nicely. Be careful when you do these that you give yourself enough room in between each step of the movement. Okay, don't have, um, you know, don't have an burst mode and be taking a million shots and they're right next to each other. Also, very importantly, have them move across the scene don't have them come towards you because that's going to just have them overlapping one another over and over and over again. Okay, last one. There might be some overlap here too. Can't remember. Chrono. Open. And here we go. Command A to select it all. Command C to copy. And command V to paste it on top. Layer mask. And let's get to painting. Let's bring our brush hardness down to 50 again. It just makes it look better. Softer. Okay, and I'm not too scared to use a big brush here. Because I kind of I kind of know that I kind of know where the rest of them are, so I'm not too worried about missing it. Okay, it's looking good. It is a really neat effect um, and used in the right sort of um, situation. You can get some really amazing looking photos by doing this. All right, coming along. Now, because my camera moved a little bit, the bricks aren't perfect. But if I wanted to spend some time fixing that up, I could. I'm going to zoom in on his face here and just go a little more carefully there to make sure I don't cut off any parts. And it looks like we got some overlap there too. So same deal. Go slowly up to... And I didn't change my brush because I'm just going really carefully. But uh, there we go. Command zero. 
There's the sequence of, sequence of movement that, again, kind of creates an interesting shot. I'm going to flatten my layer. Flatten it up. All right, and I'm going to save that. I'm going to save it as frame by frame to the desktop. Frame by frame. Save. All right, so not too challenging. Um, repetitive, but not too challenging. I'd like to see you guys take some of your own chrono photos, see what you can come up with. Maybe have a friend run by or maybe skateboard or whatever. Uh, I'd like to see some creative uh, use of this effect. Hopefully that helps. Till next time, see you later.